Hi, I'm Andreas De Groot, the Marketing Manager at SIL. Today we're going to talk about Canvas and what you need to do to be able to specify the correct Canvas for your application. Uh, for generations, artists have expressed themselves on the surface of a stretched Canvas. Today is no different. What has changed today is the way that we can apply images onto the Canvas. We don't need to rely uh, on paints and brushes anymore. Uh, we can use sophisticated inkjet machines uh, to be able to recreate stunning images on top of a canvas. A canvas is an elegant and simple way of presenting an image. It's easy to hang, easy to display, and it looks very nice. Uh, for example, you can even uh, use a gallery wrap uh, to uh, create a a uh, straightforward graphic that will not need a frame or a glass to protect it in front. You just put it up on the wall and you have a finished, uh, a finished image. So what to look for in a canvas? Uh, the first point that you need to take into consideration when you're trying to spec the right canvas uh, for, your, for your job is What's the application that the canvas is going to be in? This is primarily driven by how long you expect the graphic to last. Uh, and indirectly, it's related to uh, what the selling price of the piece is going to be. So on the high end, we have artistic reproductions that are going in museums and galleries that are going to be spent, sold for hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars. Uh, then we have uh, reproductions of um, uh, portraits, family portraits, wedding portraits. Those tend to be on the higher end and uh, people will keep those for a lifetime. Uh, then we have uh, hotel and office decor, corporate decor, where the graphic is expected to last maybe five to ten years. And, uh, but it will be exposed to heavy traffic and maybe some cleaning and that needs to be taken into consideration. And then we have home decor uh, where the lifespan can be, con can be uh, as low as a couple of years to uh, many years but lo with low traffic and uh, the quality considerations aren't as stringent for, for this application. And then we have uh, some other creative uh, applications. Uh, for example, we have uh, custom book covers using printable canvas uh, that gets uh, liquid laminated or otherwise protected and uh, creates a very unique piece. So at the end, uh, the, the main drive here is the quality and it is driven by the combination of the coding and the printer combination that you use so that you can achieve uh, the results that you're looking for. The second consideration you need to take into account is what printer you're going to be using uh, to create the graphic. Uh, so for example, uh, aqueous inkjet printers, uh, are typically on the slow end, uh, they take longer to print, but they provide the highest image quality, the greatest color gamut, the highest resolution. Uh, so most of the higher end uh, works are typically printed on aqueous printers. Uh, the newest print technology is uh, latex inkjet printing. Uh, this gives a great durability with uh, excellent image qualities. Uh, a more traditional uh, way to print canvases is with solvent and eco-solvent inks. Uh, this is a great way to create um, a, a, a fast rate of production uh, with very good image quality. Uh, there are some customers that object to uh, some of the smells that are retained in the canvas uh, due to the solvent or eco-solvent inks. And then uh, if uh, you are in full production mode uh, and you need to get uh, prints uh, done very, very quickly in large quantities, uh, the, one of the best ways is uh, using uh, UV curable inkjet printers. Um, this is great for uh, going very quickly from uh, printing 
to finishing, to shipping to the customer, uh, but uh, you do sacrifice uh, some image quality and color gamut uh, with the UV inks uh, in place of uh, speed and productivity. The third aspect in uh, selecting the, mat uh, the material for your job is personal preference. This is, might actually be the most important aspect because it's not very tangible. Uh, so the finish and the appearance of the canvas and the image is what creates that emotional connection between the image and the viewer. So some of the things to take into consideration are what's the surface like of the canvas. You can have a very smooth canvas that gives you a very even looking image. Or you can have a canvas that has a lot of texture to it or in the, in the industry lingo a lot of tooth to it. And uh, that will give the image a lot more depth and it uh, will recreate uh, you know, the more traditional canvas look uh, in, in the graphic. And one thing to keep in mind is if you have uh, too aggressive a tooth in, in the canvas, uh, you can create uh, blotchiness, especially when you're printing um, portraits or other uh, you know, people, uh, people images. Uh, it can create a blotchiness in the skin. Uh, the other uh, thing to take into consideration is the color of the base canvas. The color of the base canvas can range from a uh, cool blue white to a bright white to a warm yellow white. And the interaction of the color of the base with the image that is being portrayed uh, affects that emotional content of the, of the graphic. So, you want to use the cool, uh, the cooler, brighter whites uh, for portraits, and you might want to use uh, the more uh, natural yellow whites, the warmer whites, uh, for uh, images where uh, you have landscapes or other uh, environmental uh, type of graphics. And then the third, uh, the third element is the finish. You can go from a very high gloss or satin to a matte finish and each of these will give different characteristics uh, to, the, to the image. Uh, for example, a high gloss is going to allow a lot of color pop to, to show because it's reflecting a lot more light. But because it's reflecting a lot more light, it also creates glare. Uh, so if for applications that are in uh, retail or in other environments where you have bright lights such as a gallery or a museum, uh, high gloss is typically not used because that glare cuts away from the image and the viewer will not be able to see the image in its full detail. Um, a nice compromise is the satin finish and the satin finish uh, will still allow a lot of uh, color to come through and reducing the glare allowing that image to be seen uh, in its full potential. Artists typically uh, go for the flat mat uh, so that there is absolutely no glare coming off of the of the image so that the viewer can appreciate every single detail that is in in the work of art. Uh, the advantage of mat is also that you can use uh, different types of uh, top coats and laminates uh, on top of the on top of the graphic uh, to protect it and also to uh, fine-tune and adjust the finish to your liking. At SIL we have uh, various uh, types of canvas available to be able to print on uh, different types of uh, printers and uh, create different types of finishes and achieve uh, different types of results. So for aqueous inks, we have uh, the artist and gallery grades. We have a, a gloss uh, product that is uh, 3582 Fortuna. We have a satin, which is the 3948 Instant Dry Canvas. 
and we have the matte uh, 3857 artistic canvas. All of these are 19 mil uh, canvases uh, with no optical brighteners in them. Uh, on the decor uh, grade, we have a bright white matte canvas, the 3579, which is the decor brilliant, and it's a 15 mil canvas. For the latex inks, we have, um, on the artist grades, we also have a semi-gloss, a satin, and a matte. The 3134 Presto semi-gloss, the 3609 Picasso satin, and the 3137 Bravo 2 uh, matte canvas. And all of these are 17 mil uh, canvases. On the decor grade, uh, you can also use the 3579 Decor Brilliant uh, on the latex printer. For the eco-solvent inks, uh, we have uh, on the artist grades the 3134 Presto uh, semi-gloss canvas, we have the 3609 Picasso satin canvas, and the 3137 Bravo 2 canvas, and these are all uh, 17 mil uh, canvases. Uh, for UV inks, uh, you can virtually use all of these canvases, any canvas uh, on, on with UV inks, to get great results. Thank you very much.